okay, everyone? Are you ready to go? I love it. It's four and we start now. I'm the chief time officer, so that's the right moment to start this session. So again, are you ready? Yeah. Good. You have good energy? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's all about AI today, so we need human energy here. You know, so fuel me this session so that it's really going to go great, right? So, officially, I open this session. So, first of all, a warm human welcome <laughs> to the producers pitching their projects powered by AI Forecast, which is a Largo AI session. Who has been here last year? Raise your hands. What? Okay, I was there. Who was in Cannes? Raise your hand. Yeah, a little bit more. Hey, newbies, I hope you're going to like it. It's going to be hot because it is a high-intensity shark tank. So what we're going to do here, we're going to have producers pitching their projects powered by AI forecasts. It is really the place where also global producers with projects in development will go face to face. And believe me, it's also the light in their face. I mean, get ready, pictures. The light is really like strong. Uh, so face to face with forecasts powered by the uh, Largo revolutionary uh, software production intelligence platform. So let's go and let's start and uh, how to see, uh, to understand how the tool is actually uh, working. So I'm going to um, ask uh, in a second the founder of Largo AI to let us a little bit more. And actually, why don't you do the welcome right now, Sami, so that they know what it's all about? Thank you. Thank you, AC. Welcome, everybody. So it's great to have another pitching session. I think this is eighth or ninth of the similar format we are doing in different markets. And I guess third one with you, AC. That, uh, thank you very much again uh, moderating it with your great energy. And so today you will have 15 producers who will be presenting their projects. And I want to give a bit of insight about how our tools are working. So if this works. Uh, so as I mentioned, the 15 producers who are presenting their, uh, the projects today uh, are using our tools for a while. And the goal of our tools to analyze the content as early as uh, development stage and get insights about the content, character, casting, and the potential audience of the film. Uh, so this provides, once the film is progressing, it provides to do more informed decisions, and eventually first to achieve green lighting, and finally distribution, uh, successful distribution. So today that we will show you few results about these projects just to give an idea. Uh, some of you have already seen those, but the first thing is this uh, genre analysis graph you see on top left. Uh, this shows how different genres are evolving over the story from start till the end. And below that, you will see the character relationships map that will show the importance of the characters. The bigger circle means uh, the character is more important and their relationship with other characters. You'll see the lead actor uh, and their match with the character that is predicted by AI. And you'll see these four different scores on the right. Again, the first thing to emphasize, these scores are lower or higher. It doesn't show anything in terms of quality. It's rather for the positioning. So the first thing is genre flux score. That score shows how much fluctuations are happening uh, over, the, over the genres. Typically, these scores are becoming higher for uh, sci-fi, fantasy, adventure films, and it becomes lower for drama, romance uh, type of films. And the other two scores that you will see are related to emotions, positive emotion and emotional intensity scores. Uh, so these are relevant how the expected emotions of the audience uh, would happen while they are watching the film. Positive emotion, it shows uh, if the positive emotions are dominant, it's a score between minus 10 and 10. So higher it is means uh, we have more positive emotions. And again, having positive emotions high or low, it doesn't show something quali uh, qualitative. It's just a position. 
and we have emotional intensity. And this shows if the expected emotional intensity is high or not. If the neutral feelings are higher, this score typically becoming lower. lower. And finally, we have also these demographics predictions you will see with the uh, brown background. And here it shows the, the peak audience in terms of gender and, and age group. Again, you'll just see just over in the corner uh, for each project. Okay, I think one last point I can cover is, okay, that one. So if you want to see more about the projects, as I mentioned, this is just a few analysis about the projects. Uh, you can see financial predictions and all other elements. By going to Largo AI Connect, you won't be able to connect right away because it requires a password. But here you will have the link. You can get the code from producers directly. And you will also share the code uh, one day later People who already registered for the event, we will share by, uh, by email. I think that's it from my side, so we can go forward with the projects. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm going to take the microphone back. So you understood how data and AI are being used as a tool to better understand a film's potential, an audience, the stories wrong or weak or strong points, really, weak points. And then um, this is the moment where you need to showcase your project. And it's going to be really super interesting because we have the results of the uh, AI uh, analysis, but we are here human in the room, and I, I want to feel what you think. So I, I, will, I will hear your applause after every pitch or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Human style, human style. So just for me, I hardly see you because I'm totally flashed, right? But I want to know who is a finance person, who has money, who is loaded with cash and wants to invest in a production. Raise your hand. <laughs> Careful, it's a shark uh, uh, <laughs> pitch session, I told you. What? Where are you guys? Okay, they don't want to say. Good, good. Who is a distributor and wants to uh, check the new ideas? Who are you? I mean, okay. Who is a producer? Okay, can you tell me who you are, the rest? <laughs> I mean, really, directors? Yes. Actors? Yes, interesting. Musicians? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm really, this is really interesting. We, we need a, Sami, we need an AI tool to get them to know who they are, right? I mean, I really want to see this. <laughs> okay, great. So, this is cool because anyway, this is an excellent exercise. Welcome to the Shark Tank. Let's start. So, I will be your guide. No worries. I know producers. You're like, Ooh, what are we doing? Where are we going? You be careful with the stairs first. We have some lamps extra so that you don't bump into the dark here. So, what is going to happen? We're going to have these 15 pitches to look forward to. Three minutes per pitch. No more. So, I will be very, very sharp on this. There is not one second more. So, I will introduce the speaker with nice words, <laughs> trying to influence everyone that this is the greatest speech, so 15 times. And um, when you hear your name, please come here. I will give you a microphone. When you speak in the microphone, I will have it on, and you make sure you talk in this microphone. You can be a little bit like a rock star, you know, a little bit higher, you know, like, yeah. Okay, so you're going to pitch that way. You make sure you are in the light, otherwise we're not going to see you. Okay? Yeah. Yes? Good. So, next thing. You pitch. I go back to my seat. Three minutes. When it's finished, I get up. And I go to you. And I take your microphone and I say, thank you very much. <laughs> and that's it. Okay? And then, um, I think then uh, we will then di go directly to the next pitch, right? We don't have any human jury this year. No, they have been <laughs> replaced by AI. And uh, we're going to go to the next pitch. So I will let you go down, and I will present the next speaker. When you hear your name, you can come up. I will give you a microphone, etc., etc. Is that clear for who is pitching here? This is the first two rows, three rows, right? Show me. Yes, great. Okay, good. You're getting ready? Good. Okay. 
For the audience, you have had uh, the QR code to see the details uh, on Largo AI Connect by scanning this QR code you've seen before, so that's great. And you can do it throughout the session so that you don't miss anything. But really, the most important thing is really the pitch. The pitch or the pitches. So good. Let's go. Ready? I don't know who are the first ones, where they are, but we're going to do this now. OK. So now, first, there are two of them. I need two microphones. And I'm going to put this on. Ooh, hold on. Let's do this. Yes, it's on. And this one is on, too. Great. I call on stage Nico Bourget and Sébastien Wegner of Fusion Alpha. <laughs> Sébastien Wegner, German producer. Who, who is who? Who is Sébastien? Sebastian. Good. Sebastian. So he's the German producer and French producer. Great. You know I'm French-German, so they're great. Nico Merci. Bourget, very great, great. They are the founders of the London-based production company called Fusion Alpha. I mean, everybody has great names of their production companies. I saw. You will see. You will see. So Fusion Alpha. And uh, you are really committed to bold, international, original storytelling. Indeed. You are also the uh, uh, regional DACH executive. Wait a minute. DACH is Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, right? Uh, and at Vimeo, managing a seven-figure revenue stream to the Nasdaq-listed enterprise. And Nico is working with Meta, hello, in the AR, VR department. And I tell you, we have a who is who name list of pitches today. So. I'm going to set the timer. You ready? You have three minutes. Can we just do a All mic right. check real quick? Uh, one, yes, two, one, I've two. set my check. Let's go, let's go. Three, two, one, and go. How do you know you're real? Think about it. What if your memories wouldn't be real memories, but potentially inserted? What if you had to question what is real? Or who is real? Or who is a robot? This is the world that our protagonist, Maya, finds herself in the sci-fi thriller, The Empath Test. I'm Sebastian Wegner. And I'm Nico Bourget. And we are the founders of the London-based production company, Fusion Alpha. The Empath Test is set in 2059 and follows the journey of former robotic engineer prodigy, Maya Andron, as she sets out on the path of self-discovery, love, betrayal, loss, and will ultimately be confronted with a choice that will define the fate of humanity. At the beginning of the story, we find Maya in prison and learn that she's the current leader of an anti-android activist group whose recent protests accidentally caused the death, the death of several civilians. However, she's released to house arrest at her uncle's research estate where the man who raised her, but also the man she hates the most, offers her a Faustian pact. Test his latest androids, the very thing she swore to fight against, or be sent back to prison for the rest of her life. The empath test touches on similar tones like, like the dystopian romance in the film Never Let Me Go, the psychological thriller Ex Machina, and the one TV show that keeps on questioning the future of technology, Black Mirror. Now, our writer-director is Gethin Anthony. You might have seen him in shows like Game of Thrones as Renny Baratheon or uh, Aquarius as Charles Manson. Uh, Gethin has been developing many scripts uh, over the years, and we've just produced uh, our Oscar and BAFTA qualifying short film, Scar, with him. And now, this film will be his directorial uh, film debut. And as lead actresses, we aspire to cast Natalie Emanuel and Jessica Hennig, not only due to their outstanding talent, but also due to their rise in notoriety from the Fast and Furious franchise, the Marvel franchise, and especially looking into the great talent pool of one of the most successful TV shows of all times, Game of Thrones. Now, um, as time is running out, I want to basically address the elephant in the room, the financials. So we're looking into a three and a half million dollar budget from which we consider around 0.8 million dollars um, funded through tax rebates, which we are able to liquidate. Now this seems potentially like a small budget for a sci-fi feature film, however, due to the very grounded and contained nature of the story, and as well as it being a directorial debut and the, let's say, smaller amount of locations in the script, um, we are very confident that this is the right um, budget for this indie sci-fi film. Now, last but not least, um, I want to leave you with a final consideration. 
Ex Machina, which was a film that was suggested by Lago AI, a similar film, uh, made in the box office and across the home entertainment distribution streams, 50 million dollars uh, in revenue. <laughs> and so, That's you know, it. I leave you with that number. That Thank you so case. much. Thank, Thank you so you much. So much. <laughs> careful, careful, careful. I told you I am pitiless for time, so I'm very sorry for this. So, second ones, please get ready. Deborah von Habsburg, Polynesian Pictures, also a great name, right? Deborah Habsburg, multicultural, multilingual, filmmaker, actress from El Salvador, yes. She's a producer of the execution of Maximilian with Mexican director Patricia Regan. Uh, she brings a very unique perspective, I would say, personally linked to the story, right? So um, you're going to tell us everything about the project now, yep. right? So I'm going to give you a microphone. Thank you. I'm going to set yeah. my timer. Hold on, don't start yet. No, I'm and just checking my mic. Yes, you see, okay. <laughs> you feel good? It's feel great, good. no? Yes, under the lights. Three, two, one, and go. Hello, my name is Deborah Habsburg, and I present to you the execution of Maximilian. 1867 was a pivotal year in Mexican history. President Benito Juarez must execute Emperor Maximilian of Habsburg in order to secure the independence of Mexico. But upon discovering that Maximilian is his Mason brother and one Mason cannot kill another, he cunningly enacts a plan where he executes the emperor in a public act but spares the man, who later resurfaces in the Central American Republic of El Salvador. I was born in El Salvador, and I grew up with the folkloric tales of this enigmatic man, who everybody swore had to be either a European prince or Maximilian himself. When I later happened to marry a Habsburg, I was contacted by Rolando de Enrique, a man who had dedicated most of his life to uncovering the truth about Don Justo. And he wanted a DNA sample from my husband. But apart from that, he also shared his extensive research with me. And I have to say that at first, I, I did find the theory bizarre and highly improbable. But upon close examination of the facts, there were too many details in order to ignore. And I thought, if it's not Maximilian, then who is it? Is it someone from his close circle? Is it an imposter and a con artist? I don't know. But since then, I have been fascinated with the story. And together with Mexican director Patricia Regan, we have developed a limited series called The Execution of Maximilian, which is part historic fiction, part Masonic thriller conspiracy theory. We believe that this series has a lot of the ingredients that many incredibly successful series have had. It has the reinvented or um, reimagined history, like series like uh, Bridgerton, sorry, and um, The Great, which have been incredibly successful. It also has the epic landscapes and the romantic adventure of, um, of series like Outlander. And we add a special ingredient, which is that of magical realism that is so true to our Latin American storytelling tradition. There is no doubt that there's interest in stories of survival, like that one of Anastasia and the Romanovs which the public is so interested in. And obviously there's a lot of interest in the Habsburg Empire, as we've seen with series like Sissy, The Empress, Marie Antoinette, but none tell the story, the tragic and impactful empire of Maximilian and Charlotte in Mexico. And we would like to invite a co-producing partner to come and join us in telling this wonderful story to the world. It's a wonderful story. Yes, thank you. Yes, I, I would love to have the time to interview everyone for an hour. I mean, like, really, this is fascinating. I mean, hey, do you know another place where you get so many great stories by really, like, great people, all served on a tablet? Hello? And even already completely analyzed? That's really cool. So I love that. Okay, good. So let's go on, because we have a lot 
on our plates today. So, um, next one. Next one is Melissa Hayes of Dichotomy Directions. She's an accomplished LA producer, renowned for her storytelling prowess, tech-savvy management. I, I would think, like, tech-savvy management? Are you using AI for management tools or so? Well, hey, analysis is a great thing, you know? Yeah, no, totally. No, that's great. <laughs> so she, have, uh, she has a feature films like Freemason, Templar Nation, Deet and Bax, TV productions, really great, Big Brother, Fear Factor, Foodtastic, American Idol, hello. And she founded also the Committee Creative. I think this is really super interesting, and I need to mention this because uh, it is all about equity and innovation, and we need this in the industry. So thank you, you do that. This is great. Yes, somebody, yes, hello. Great. Okay. You ready? Oh. <laughs> Mic check. I probably can do it without, but we'll keep it up here just in case. Okay. Tell me when to go. Three. Two, one, and go. Prepare to be spellbound by Thieves, a gripping, female-driven, supernatural thriller penned by acclaimed screenwriter and script doctor Richard Dutcher. Thieves delves into the darker facets of love and seduction, lust and deception. We meet David and Linda Griffin as their tranquil town is grappling with a crime spree and child abductions. Marital bliss quickly descends into darkness as their new neighbors will stop at nothing to steal the Griffin's essence in order to reclaim youthful vitality. The succubi grifting is a visually disturbing parasitic dance that drains the griffins of all they hold dear, including their unborn child. David is wrongfully accused and incarcerated. He loses his reputation, his job, and after an unexplained illness, he may soon lose his life. Amidst all this chaos, Linda races against the clock to expose the true succubi culprits of the crime spree and battles to regain all that she has lost. Thieves has a compelling narrative with a menacing allure of the supernatural and promises a riveting cinematic experience that will leave audiences on the edge of their seats until the very unpredictable emotional resolve. And all the while, we might have set it up for a sequel and prequel. Nonetheless, our Largo analysis predicts ROIs of 400% and upwards for equity partners, hint, hint. The strength of our attached team allows us to keep production value immensely high on screen while fiscally remaining in the budgetary ranges for SAG and IATSE tier one and two. Our team includes Sundance winning cinematographer Valentina Coniglia and consulting line producer Howie Young, who has managed budgets that total over a billion dollars. Our composer, Nicholas Rivera, has scored 75 films and worked with every major studio and network. And our, our producer, William Horbury, in the audience, will bring 35 years of experience building legendary commercial television and film sets to our West Virginia locations and adding immense production value on screen without the cost that you might have to build it in LA. So securing West Virginia's 31% incentive is a strategic approach, allowing the bulk of our capital to be used, securing top tier talent attachments. Script is in David Arquette's hand. As you can see, Largo agrees. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Ah. <laughs> someone, someone has to tell me what is minus three. Oh, it's minus first. I, I, I average. So okay, that, that's all good. That's good. It's just, just like you know, like positive emotion minus three. Or like okay, good, good, got it. I had math and statistics for a couple of years, so that's great. Actually, I need to get a little better after three pitches. I think it's the right moment to adjust the human response here. So let's pretend you find the project good. I mean, they're all good, right? But good. How would you... Applause. Give it to me. 
No, that's just good. Now we have wow. Okay. That's better. And if it is something that you would give immediately the 7 million they have if you had them, you, because you want to see it next year on screen, how would you say that to me? Yeah. Yes, you would stand up. Exactly, stand up. Let's have a standing ovation then, okay? So give me the three grades, like good, yeah, awesome, and whoa. I want to see you, okay? Good, let's do this. Fourth. He is a member of the Spanish Film Academy. Good start, no? I mean, I can pitch, right? So, and <laughs> his notable works include Blue and Malone, Impossible Cases, and most recently, he was serving as an animation director for the Spanish Chinese production. Guess the name? Dragon Keeper. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Okay, Abraham Lopez Guerrero, where are you? Oh, it's you! First row, central seat. This is fantastic. Oh my God. No, no, no. Okay, you're yo, good. You're yo, good. Yo. Okay. I give you one second uh, more. No, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> Don't. You're dreaming. <laughs> okay. You ready? Three. Three. Two. two one, one. Go. go. Okay. Um, do you remember your imaginary friends? Do you have ones? You remember when was the last time you talked with them? Sometimes I feel that all my friends were imaginary. Okay, and that's why I'm here. So, uh, this story begins where, well, we, we won a Goya Award, we were uh, Oscar uh, selected for the feature film, for the, for the short movie. So we, we have a test of the characters, you can see a short movie, very, very emotional. So this story begins where this, this precise summer where the things began to change, okay? We got uh, Noah, which is the main character, 12 years old boy, who is living his fantastic and impossible adventures, saving the world three times before dinner. But then uh, he suddenly knows Sarah, which is a 12-year-old girl who doesn't need imaginary friends because she is fantastic. So that's the, the point of the adventure, okay? It's a theater film uh, made in animation uh, with live action and animatronics to hack the characters, okay? So, that's the beginning of the adventure. Join the impossible journey, which is growing up, at least for me. So that's all. Someone wants more time for, can I borrow the time? Yeah, borrow so that's all. Thank you, thank you for listening. We got what? the script, we got the script. You must read it, please read. Okay, this is my producer, my best friend, so these things together, so thank you. Wow. What is this? Wow. 15 minutes, Antonio Banderas. I don't want to yes. you alone. No, you, you, do you want to talk to me for one minute? Yes, of course. Yes. I got one minute. Yeah, you I have one minute. Animation Spanish movie. I, I, I have you seen Dragon Keeper? You can see Dragon Keeper today. Yes. And yesterday and tomorrow. Okay, yes. well, tomorrow is better for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah right. because. Than yesterday, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I will have a look at that. Okay, Thank you so Dragon much. Dragon Keeper is a nice movie. Okay, cool. Well, he, this guy can sell, right? Okay, good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes. <laughs> I think it's the first time that somebody is like, whoa, me on stage, like with the timekeeping, right? Because normally I'm in charge. This is good. Okay, good. So, next one, also a great company name, Invisible Swords. So it will be David John Jeffrey, and it's really great because in his first novel, yes, novel, God Tech, Mark of the Beast, whoa, um, it was published, it reached the number two in the religious science fiction category, but as a filmmaker also in his production, uh, which was including uh, You've Got Instagram, I'm in Love with My Stalker, I love this title, um, <laughs> Bling Time also. So, but anyway, currently he's uh, all set to direct a feature based on his best selling novel, obviously, God Tech. I welcome on stage David John Jeffrey. There you go. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Two, two. Ah, gosh, I still have these 14 seconds left from the last one. This is crazy. 
This is actually good. She took away 30 seconds of my pitch. <laughs> no. <laughs> actually, by talking about 30 seconds of my pitch. Oh, okay. It's good. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one, and go. Hi, I'm David John Jeffrey. Um, yes, yeah, so I had a book. The book actually came from a dream I had in 1993 when I was 16 years old. I dreamt about a future world that would be uh, us microchipped and we would have to use swipe card technology and microchipping to live and everything. And it was controlled by an AI computer which did all our statistics and everything. And, uh, and then as I grew up, things became true. And in 2009, when, uh, my, when Barclay Card brought out swipe card technology, I decided to make the book and then it got to number two in the Kindle charts. I got approached by Warner Brothers and they said they'd like to make a film of the book. And I didn't like some of their ethics, so I turned them down. And then I got approached by Lionsgate and Lionsgate said that it's a verbal agreement, but they said that if I made it myself, they would distribute it for me. So that's sorted. Um, I have on the cast at the moment contracted Fraser Hines, Eric Roberts, Stacey Dash, and uh, a cast and crew that stayed with me for the last 10 years while I've been trying to raise money for this film. The story itself, you're following the fa uh, lives of a family who have chosen not to take the microchip implant, but instead live a life with no home and constantly on the run from the one world government known as the Father, which is the Free American Technological Human Extension Research. And it's a family of four, four people, Matthew, Mary, Thomas, and Alice. Matthew is the protagonist. He is a typical man. He gets fallen into a, uh, away from his family by a woman, and then he ends up taking the microchip, and he ends up regretting it. Uh, we've got Mary. She is the really strong Christian woman in the, in the family, first a Christian family, and uh, she... Um, stays and fights against this system. She meets a woman who she trusts, a priest, who turns out to be a cyborg, and, uh, and then betrays the family, the, the, the cyborg, not the woman. And uh, then they've got Thomas, he's the elder boy, he's 15, he becomes a freedom fighter. And then Alice, who's seven, she becomes doctrined into the system and becomes a soldier and ends up hunting for family. Okay, so, two million budget, 1.8 million investment needed. According to Largo AI, the return on investment net is low 3.8 million, average 5.5 million, and high 9 million. There you go. Boom. Whoa. Okay. Fantastic. 30 seconds. I have to tell you, I love a name like God Tech. Because now, because of all the AI stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because... God you still have 17 minutes, so, uh, seconds. God, I'm, you, they confuse me. They're too early, all of God them. Tech. God Tech, it's genetics on digital technology. Yeah. They're all acronyms. Oh, yeah. Society of Nanotechnology is the son, don't know, father, son, and God Tech. Yeah, <laughs> but it sounds like a, a great name for a project. It's zero seconds now, so we can go on. Thank you so much. Have a great pitch. I like that. Zero. Okay, whatever they tell. Okay, so the next one is going to be also quite something, I must say. Because the next one is so good. I mean, sorry, no, I don't want to say it. They're all good, right? But this one is a versatile actress first. And she has been featured alongside other actors like Danny Trejo, Bruce Willis, Nicolas Cage, in TV series like Training Days, oh, Day, sorry, and The Shield, for example. Not bad for a start. She's a director, she's a producer and, uh, the, of, of the award-winning documentary called Altitude, not Attitude. Best Future Documentary and Best, honors, uh, best Director Honors. She's also the co-producer -produ of Ambush, starring Aaron Eckhart. Acclaimed for the TV series Street Living, which uh, earned her the best director at six festivals. Not bad, I would say. Maggie Avila, please come on stage. Wow. I'm already flashed before you pitch. <laughs> no pressure. No, no, no pressure. No Thank pressure. You so much. We're going to take it easy. Hold on, hold on. So, ready? Yes. Three, two, one, and zero. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations to the amazing producers and your amazing projects. Thank you, Largo, for having me. Deep Echo is about a fearless scientist who investigates 
the mysterious ruins of a Mayan pyramid hidden in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, but gets trapped in her flooded artificial intelligence capsule where trying to survive, she makes the greatest of human discoveries. Deep Echoes, comparable films, are the abyss, and I'm not shaking at all. <laughs> Um, the Beckham's comparable films are The Abyss, Interstellar, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Gravity. With a target audience of 13 to 55 years old, males and females. Um, it is proposed to be directed by John Turtletub and proposed to star Nicolas Cage, Donnie Yen, and Shah Rukh Khan. Woo. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> And uh, it's set to start production in August of 2024. I know it's soon, but we're getting there. Deep Echo is destined to be a great success in North America with a box office projections of at least $100 million and worldwide around $300 million as per our last sales forecasts from Largo AI analysis. Thank you, Largo. Whoa. <laughs> We intend to capitalize in all distribution channels. And um, we are in collaboration with elite partners with who we are. We will be hosting biannual events, such galas and sustainable fashion shows, promoting the UN Sustainable Development Goals, especially Deep Echoes is focused. Deep Echo promotes and educates about life below water climate change, diversity and inclusion, infrastructure and innovation, quality education, equal pay for women, and reduced inequalities, revealing the disabled, different able, community's potential. I am also looking for co-production partnerships. At deepechomovie.com, you may also contribute to our fund raising through our fiscal sponsors, Creative Visions, a nonprofit organization that supports creative activists, those who use the arts and media to ignite social change. Well, Deep Echo is a huge, has a huge difference between um, its uh, comparable films' budgets. The similarities that have proven to captivate the audiences are masterfully integrated in this script, making it into a film that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Artistically and technically, is it to do, um, make? <laughs> Come talk to me. Yeah. I want to see that film. I want to see that film, so bring the millions and make it happen. Really, great. Okay, oh, I have a double microphone. Well, that, it doesn't matter. It, it, do you hear me better, actually, when I have two microphones? One microphone? Two microphones? No. Good. Okay, so the next one. And again, a great name for the production company, Story Tree. No, nice, right? LA-based producer, director, writer, who had also an acclaimed film and television program, um, where the productions are actually a part of the curriculum and the students get real-world hands-on experience, which is great. Because this is exactly what you need when the subject is a sociopathic school teacher tormenting students. Whoa. Luke Golden, did you have that idea? Where are you? Yes. Okay. There you go. <coughs> Okay, okay, okay. So we're gonna have this and whew. oh, hold on. Yes. Yes. You I, feel good. I might need a third hand. We'll see what happens here because I'm doing this old school. Oh yeah, yeah I know. So we'll, yeah. See, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I couldn't have another microphone because I already have two things. You know. So okay, you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Bang. Hello, uh, I'm Luke Golden, an LA-based uh, writer, director, and producer. A project I'm pitching today is a horror movie about a, a school who hires a sociopath torture students to make them better people. <laughs> My film is called Hard Lessons, a teen horror contained thriller. It's a breakfast club meets Saw, but more PG-13. <laughs> it's scary, thrilling, funny, but most importantly, fun. Whoa. 
When the worst mass shooting in America takes place on a school campus, Congress turns all schools across America into more or less prisons. Armed guards in every classroom, students scanned, frisked, and under constant surveillance. Hold on, I promise I'll get to the fun part. After an uprising lands a group of students in in-school suspension, each from a conventional clique, the mean girl, the dumb jock, the tech snob, the artist, the slacker, and the outcast. The group devises a plan to break into the school, sabotage the computer system, and send a message to the world they will not be oppressed. Little do they know, it's a setup. A sadistic teacher known as the schoolmaster takes them down one by one. Imagine your worst teacher you've ever had crossed with Freddy Krueger. He devises horrific lessons designed to educate and terrify each student based on their character flaws. The twist is the students are not dead or even hurt. The schoolmaster is an instrument of the state. Each student was identified as a target and educated to prevent future school shootings. Now, I'm gonna tell you why I'm uniquely qualified to helm this project. Full disclosure, I've been a high school teacher for 17 years. And I run a nationally, <laughs> nationally acclaimed film and television program. I have directed over two, 20 short films and produced over 2,000 short films, all showcased at the 40 film festivals I've organized. With 28 years in the film industry, it's time to make a feature film and bring my students along for the ride. So horror is not only my, fa my students' favorite genre, it is also synonymous with profits. It is the most reliably profitable genre in, the, in cinemas for the last 10 years, more so following the pandemic. The metrics on the Largo analyst, analytics are strong. I saw 550% to 1600% ROI. We have a dynamite script that's been vetted by experts, a spectacular team assembled, ready to spring into action, and with a low $1.5 million budget, an investment in hard lessons is pretty safe. The film can be shot anywhere in the world. All we need is a school and a phenomenal tax credit. No, okay. You hear the applause, right? You hear the applause. It's slightly louder, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Careful, careful, careful here. Okay, well, good, well, please. Don't break your leg, please. So this is, this is really good. This is really, I'm just wondering, you know, is, are you realizing your dream through this film? You know, like the 70 you know, like tormenting students. Yeah, exactly. That's really funny. Okay, but it's only 1.5 million, no? So easy going. No brainer, basically. Okay, so next one, coming from a totally different place. Estonian born filmmaker, now based in New York City, exactly. Eha, whoops, hello. And um, it's great because she pursued her dream of being an actress and filmmaking, and uh, she had two uh, festival award winning short films. I mean, everybody has having awards here in this program. This is crazy. Um, but also, she does music composition Amazon series, The Romanovs, please, hello. And after the war in Ukraine, <laughs> She was inspired by her uh, mother's double, um, second war um, life. story, life story, exactly. And uh, she wrote the screenplay for Etude of Life. So that's why you're here today, to tell us a little bit more about this. So I'm going to put this on in a second. You're good? You feel the stage? Hello. Yeah. Yes, it's great, right? Okay. Ready? Okay. Yes, go. Etude of Life tells a story of Elsa, a woman over a 50-year span. It also reveals a love triangle starting from 1920s into World War II. Hence a bit like um, Dr. Shivago meets Casablanca. I know it's a high bar, but you have to aim for the stars. So um, when we first meet Elsa, a 20-year-old, living in Estonian countryside, she is tired of life of milking cows, and when her communist boyfriend, Vaino, takes her to a ball, she can't help but leave him for a much more charming and rich Marcus. When we meet them again, 20 years later, it is 1944, it is war time in Tallinn, Estonia. 
Elsa's now husband, Marcus, has turned out to be gay and an alcoholic, and Elsa, so desperate for love, has fallen for a German officer, Hans, who's playing Chopin, Etude and A flat, on a piano, hence the name Etude of Life. Um, it is a hauntingly beautiful music which becomes a soundtrack of Elsa's life unraveling. However, when Elsa's beautiful daughter, Marta, together with a German soldier, Karl, gets arrested by the incoming Soviet army, it is finally when Elsa wakes up and jumps into action of saving her daughter's life. Unfortunately, the only person who can save is now a communist officer in charge, the same Vino Elsa left 20 years ago. Needless to say, there's very much of exciting action and as um, Largo AI says, thriller and a romantic story all mixed together. You can see this crazy thing there, which you have to find out when you see the movie. Um, so we have cast most of the roles, uh, still looking for and have been speaking with the main lead actor. Um, we have filmed five scenes already and found incredible locations in Estonia, absolutely amazing and very uh, cost-friendly. And we're looking for a co-producer. We have Lithuanian co-producer. We also have top stars from Estonia, Lithuania and Germany. And of course, we're looking for more funding. So any of those people you were looking before, let me know. Okay, great. You, you, you would have had 20 seconds more. Oh, I thought I was going to go over, so I cut out the whole story. No, 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 but I would have cut you before. Don't <laughs> worry. No, no, there is no overtime here for anyone. But well, yes, then I can say that, yes, my mom is now 93, and she was 13 years old during the war, and she told me some of the stories, which it is fiction, but it is based on true events That's of the great. war. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. You. This is great. Okay, the next duo is super interesting because what happens when an occupational therapist for over 30 years, based in New England, meets the founder of Lost Lake Productions with 30 years of experience in the world of independent film? I wonder. I don't know, but I want to see. It's very interesting because uh, Sean Chambeau has been um, specialized in uh, geriatrics and dementia. And uh, he started actually his project in an effort to document dementia and film seniors and etc. So this is really very interesting. And I'm really curious about your pitch. So please, Sean Chambeau and Daryl Tucker. <laughs> oh, yes. So, each of you take a microphone, test, test. be careful with the stairs, hold on, take your marks. You are good in the light, yes? Okay, let's go guys, this is your time. Good afternoon, my name is Daryl Tucker, I represent Lost Lake Productions, it's an honor to be here at the European Film Market. Thank you Largo AI for not only this opportunity to pitch at the EFM, but also last year at the AFM in LA and the Cannes Film Market. Lost Lake Productions is an alliance of independent filmmakers who are passionate about the art and science of cinema. Allow me to introduce our newest project, Ageless. This is a series creator, Sean Shambo, who is an American occupational therapist with 30 years of experience in the geriatric field. The metaphor senior tsunami did not exist 10 years ago. The term refers to the demographic shift caused by the massive baby boom generation with modern medicine, if you avoid heart disease or cancer, you can just expect to live towards 100. If you don't have a road map, this is the bad news. Your golden years are shit. <laughs> the greatest challenge is not longer population growth, but population aging. There is another way. I imagine, if you will, I was recently at the world-famous Head of the Charles Regatta in Boston, where the first boat crewed exclusively by seniors over 80. Or how about a former Olympian in his 90s still breaking records in the senior track and field events? These are remarkable stories of elders. 
This is the genesis behind our project, Ageless. I've developed a, whole lot, a holistic practice that is the secret sauce, allowing seniors to embrace that body, that body mind connection. The documentary is inspired elders in their pursue of happiness and a good life, whether it's telling a story about a 90-year-old martial artist, even a story about seniors and sex, the subjects will resonate with people of all ages. Everyone can benefit from learning to age agelessly. I hope that you all live to 100, provided that when you die, it's because your damn parachute didn't open. Thank you, Sean. Ageless is the type of universal story that were behind lucrative IPs such as Golden Bachelor, The Blue Zone, and Golden Girls. For a modest production budget of 350K per episode, the streaming ROI alone on this series would net $14 million, with 20 million views in the first month alone on streaming. We are looking for partners with vision. For a pitch deck on both Ageless and our slate of other projects, please look on our website, Lost Lake Productions. Thank you. Wow, perfect timing. You trained that, right? Seriously. Thank you so Thank much. You. Very good. Excellent. Love this. Okay, that was great, right? Hey, you know what? That was the 10th speech. No, we're going to have the 10th speech now. Are you counting? Are you with me? Yes? Okay, good. So, are you in good form? You're not, you know, like... It's not boring, that's for sure. <laughs> There's so many stories. So, okay, let's go and move to the 10th pitch. And I don't want to bore you, but it is an award-winning screenwriter. <laughs> yes, with award-winning films. Yes. With <laughs> no, it's great. And it is seen also in Men, The Wedding, the love life of a black girl. Hello, I want to see this. And uh, it's Spade Robinson. Where are you? I cannot see you. Yes! There you go. Thank you. Welcome on stage. Hope Thank you feel you. good. Okay. Yeah, you're ready? Okay. Yes, I'm she ready. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Spade Robinson. I am the writer, director, and producer of Lay Bloomers. And Lay Bloomers is a film that anybody who's ever wanted something badly can understand, which is literally everyone ever. But in a room full of artists and people who work with artists, I know you're going to overstand Lay Bloomers. You see, in Late Bloomers, two best friends who are also artists go on their very last road trip together after they've made a suicide pact. One friend makes it, the other one does not. Our friend who does make it, Sunday, reneges on this suicide pact, and the guilt that comes from reneging on this pact sends her down a spiral of losing grip on reality. As the two best friends drive through the American South alone, the horror of being these two women by themselves is what creates the tension and the horror of this film. However, these two people being best friends creates the comedy and levity that we're looking for. In this film, Sunday finds an affirmation for life, which is pushing past the failed relationships, the failed careers, and the failed dreams that she's had to realize that there is a reason to stay alive even if your life doesn't look like what you dreamed and hoped it would. This film is a thrilling meditation on loss, grief, friendship, and it affirms life, something that we see as a suicide prevention film, which is rare in this genre. It has the tone of virgin suicides and get out. At this point, our film is at $2 million. We're shooting it in Arkansas, which has a tax credit of at least 30% per film. And we're looking for partners who not only understand the business of making a horror film with a diverse cast, but also understand the power of telling stories that affirm life and affirm the life of artists. Thank you. Okay. I have a question to the audience to make sure. Did I miss something? 
Or did you notice it's the first lead actor, a female lead actor? Is it the first time we see a solo female? What? Yes, is it? Or did I miss one? I did miss one. So hey, double applause to you. This is great. OK. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm following, right? I'm listening. Even if you see me type on my devices, it means I'm on the time, right? <laughs> to make sure I don't... <laughs> okay, good. Next one. So, he has worked as a director and designer in film and theater for almost 50 years. I love the multi-generational things that we have now. He's writer and producer of Joe Hill. His last feature was Jack on the Treehouse, which is available on Amazon Prime Video. So, hello. And Tubi, by the way, also. Yeah, yeah. You ready to go? So, oh, hold on, it's the wrong Hello. phone. I'm lost Hello. in devices here. You can see it's three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I press yeah. play, I press play. We're ready. Hello, my name's Jim Schneider. I'm the writer, director, producer of Joe Hill. I'd like to thank Lar Largo AI for including me in this event. And I'd like to thank, whoa, I'd like to thank all of you for attending. Inequality is at a peak. Immigrants are demonized, the poor are victimized. The wealthy few control our world. The year is 1915. The Wadleys, the industrial workers of the world, try to organize that underclass into one big union, and they are met with violence. Joe Hill is a songwriter and a Swedish immigrant. The Wadleys sing Joe's songs on the picket lines and in the streets. All that is true, but our story is a work of fiction. In our story, Joe's friend Frank is murdered and then comes back. Not everyone can see him, but to Joe, he's very real. Joe is arrested and falsely accused of murder. Dead Frank advises him to make the trial about the injustice, about the inequality. Joe will have the spotlight. There is a woman who tries to help Joe, offers to be his alibi, testify in court, Lila. But Joe is convinced that he will never be freed. It becomes a contest of Frank encouraging Joe to speak out and Lila trying to save his life. Joe decides that what he has to say is more important than his life, and that decision is what drives our story. Uh, there is a team. Our production designer and composer are award-winning and old friends of mine. Our development executive is, is Kevin Christofferson, who brought me to Largo AI. Uh, we wouldn't be as far along as we are without him. We have a budget, a shooting schedule. We're incorporated. We have legal representation with Andrew Barcello. We're looking to shoot in uh, southwest Montana. The, uh, our locations can be found around Butte. I started working in the theater in the 1970s. I was actor, director, stagehand, designer, playwright. In the mid-80s, I started working film production. Uh, over the next 15 years, I worked on over 50 productions. I also started to make my own films. Uh, shortly after 2000, I stopped working production to start working on my own projects, uh, one of which was raising my son. I continued to write and make films. In 2019, I produced and directed Jack in the Treehouse, a film I also wrote. It went to the festivals, about 20 different festivals. It won awards. It's now available on Amazon Prime Video and Tubi. Uh, for Joe Hill, we're looking for financiers and producing partners. I'm excited to move forward with this project and I invite you to join me. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. OK. We're going to have a duo again. And it will be very interesting, because one is educated as an engineer. Yeah, he was a little bit like too early. Yes. So one is educated as an engineer, but he already has been helping films to come to life and to distribution. And he's here today to pitch his directorial debut, Web of Life, I love the title. He's coming uh, to present this story, which is at the intersection of academia and surfing, taking place in uh, um, Santa Barbara, of course, California, which is his hometown. And he's coming with Daniel Quiros, his producer, and uh, the producer is going to represent the surfing thing. I think you are the one with the long hair, right? The surfer, come on! 
That's a very interesting Oh, you have also the outfit. This is great. <laughs> Take me there. This is wonderful. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yes. Oh, hold on. Let me press play first. Yeah, no, don't try. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. We are honored to be here. So thank you, Largo. Thank you, Celine. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And this is Jonathan, and I'm Daniel, and we're here from California uh, as producers of Web of Life. Um, we're currently in post-production, and we're seeking worldwide distribution or acquisition. Web of Life is a comedy drama where cultures collide in a beachside college town uh, when the lives of a nerd and a surfer intertwine. And the two stepbrothers are, uh, must navigate this uh, life uh, in an adventure. In a, they find romance. They, find, they gotta deal with finals, and they encounter a surf cult that they have to deal with. So that's uh, the, the storyline a little bit. And um, we, our, our, our film uh, has two star actors. Uh, one of them is Corbin Bernson. We, you've probably seen him in LA Law, in Major League, in Psych. And um, our additional star is Aaron Douglas. You've probably seen him well known as Chief in Battlestar Galactica. So I've got a fun story to share with you about Aaron. Because when he found out about Web of Life through one of our producers, he let us know that he had met Corbin in an audition and had such an incredible experience acting alongside of him that he flew himself out to California from Canada twice to be in Web of Life. And because I wrote it, I just added parts for, parts for Aaron mm -hmm. <laughs> so the two of them could act together. Mm -hmm. um, and so because we had the opportunity to have two stars, we actually did uh, what's called simultaneous shooting. So we had two crews in two locations filming at the same time so we could swap the stars back and forth and uh, accomplish more scenes in a single day. Um, that being said, because we had two crews, this film is not only my directorial debut, but it also features an award-winning director, my colleague, um, Aditya. This film was shot on location in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, we used high-end equipment, uh, the Ari Alexa Mini LF, and lights, lenses, if you've heard of those sort of things. Um, I wrote this script for all, all audiences, um, but the two main characters are um, within the range that Largo has specified. It's quite incredible, their analysis software. I highly recommend it. Uh, thank you all very much for Putting that, putting that together for us, it's been very helpful. Okay. Um, our our short-term uh, goal for this meeting is to achieve worldwide distribution and um, acquisition for Web of Life. And our long-term goal is to build lasting relationships in the film community. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you. Very good. Loved it. OK, the next one was because my team helped me to put all the Vita together. And I have a note of my team on my card saying like, wow, so cool and impressive, very hard to shorten. Nigerian, American, British, creative force, excelling as a writer, director, actor, producer, and lawyer. Yeah. With expertise in data protection and privacy. Not bad, I would say. She produced the Academy Award shortlisted Bienvenidos a Los Angeles. She received the Best Female Producers Accolade at the Toronto International Women's Film Festival. Best Short Film at Diversity in Cannes. Not bad, huh? And um, yes, she's really working also to amplify underrepresented voices. So I'm very, very glad and proud and uh, honored to have Lolia Etomi on stage. <laughs> wow, I mean, really, look at this. She wrote this to me, hard to short, impressive. I'm not joking, you know? Thank you, thank you. Okay, you ready? You yeah, feel good? I am ready. Good, okay. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between and beyond, before I delve into the heart of my pitch, I want to draw your attention to a pressing global issue, one that has haunted communities, silenced voices, and left scars that may never fully heal. 
I speak of the insidious reality of child silencing and abuse in religious extremist societies and disciplinary boarding schools all over the world. This issue hits close to home for me because I myself attended one such school, a place where the pursuit of discipline often masked the perpetuation of cruelty. Tragically, my experience was not unique. It echoed the harrowing stories of countless others all around the world who have suffered in silence, their voices drowned by oppressive forces that sought to break their spirits. But I'm standing here now so you can see I'm not broken. We have witnessed the heartbreaking situation at Darwin College in Nigeria where the untimely death of an 11-year-old Sylvester Oromoni Jr. and the alleged subsequent cover-up by the school served as a grim reminder of the dangers lurking within those walls. We've seen the shocking discovery of hundreds of Native American children's mass graves buried under residential schools in the USA and Canada. We've heard the chilling stories coming out of the Catholic Church, a testament to the atrocities committed by those who abuse religion in the name of righteousness. Even public figures like Paris Hilton have bravely spoken out about their traumatic experiences at institutions like Provo Canyon School for troubled teens, shining the spotlight on the systemic exploitation and abuse that pervades this, these institutions. So in the face of such darkness, one can't help but wonder, what if? What if one child, emboldened by courage and fueled by love, dared to defy the oppressive norms that sought to silence her? What if a mother's unwavering love became the catalyst for monumental societal change? It was these questions, born out of my own experience and the tales of others, that inspired me to write Discipline. It's a story that transcends boundaries, challenges norms, and dares to provoke meaningful change. A story so epic, so inspiring, that it promises to captivate audiences around the world. Discipline follows the journey of a spirited young girl named D.I.A., who finds herself at the crossroads of religious oppression, cultural oppression, social justice, and gender inequality. Sent to a disciplinary all-girls Catholic boarding school in rural Nigeria by her grieving mother after the death of her revolutionary father, Diaye must navigate a chilling landscape of abuse and corruption. When her cries to be heard go unanswered, she takes matters into her own hands. If you can't beat the system, burn it to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lolia. Thank you very much. Ah, it's hard for me to stop you all. So that was, by the way, the third pitch of the last three ones. So we are going three, two, one, and then zero again, but the other way around. So this time, we're going to have, an, again, a duo. Also very, very nice. I, I'm totally into tech. I, I'm, I'm working at the crossing of digital media, innovation, technologies, and creative content. This is my normal job um, when I'm not on stage. And of course, this pitch was really like talking to me, right? Because these two New York-based co-directors of uh, Manhattan Exorcism, their third feature film, will now have something which is motion capture, VFX genre film with a graphic novel aesthetics. Sounds really nice. It will be revolutionary, unique, with a proprietary VFX AI pipeline stuff that you're going to explain to us, probably. And it will be, um, yes, they have been developing it for their first film. So I'm very intrigued, right? So come on stage, Ryan Gitterman and Sam Ellison of Precariat Productions. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Give me only hello, one hello, second hello, hello. to make sure, you know, and I prove you that we start with three minutes. And ah. there you are. Hello, <laughs> I'm Sam. <laughs> and I'm Ryan. And we are the co-founders of Precariat Productions. We are an upstart boutique production company based out of New York, and we specialize in genre films as well as rotoscope and mocap VFX. Today, we are looking for debt, equity, and sales partners for our upcoming feature film, a Manhattan Exorcism. It is a rotoscope, VFX, motion capture-driven film, uh, which we are so excited to present to you today. The movie begins in New York in the summer of 2001. 
Father Jack Madres performs a harrowing exorcism on an innocent boy, which provokes a crisis of faith. Madres falls from being one of the Vatican's preeminent exorcists to becoming a washed-up alcoholic chaplain serving the inmates of Rikers Island. 20 years later, New York City is celebrating the capture of a vicious serial killer named Royal Templeton. Royal is thrown into Rikers, where Father Madres is duty-bound to give him confession. But little does he know that Royal has a sinister plan. He begins a terrifying game of cat and mouse with Father Madres, sending him on a perilous collision course, which, which Madres must rectify his past misdeeds and wrestle with Satan himself. Shane West has attached to play Royal. Shane is an incredible actor, most well known for playing a handsome bad boy in A Walk to Remember. But we're so excited that he's going to play a deranged serial killer for us. Uh, also attached to the project is Zach Via, a phenomenal actor who starred in American Horror Story. What makes this film uniquely special, though, is the VFX AI pipeline that we've built to make it. We start by using Unreal Engine to create virtual sets and environments. Then, we use a MOSIS Star Tracker camera system to capture the actor's performances and composite those environments in real time. Then, we use a custom-coded, closed-source AI program called Warp Fusion to composite a graphic novel aesthetic onto the film with custom models that I coded myself. <laughs> and for those of you who only speak English, think of it like a graphic novel literally come to life. We are going to make a technologically groundbreaking feature film never before seen in a way that not only preserves the actor's performances, but expands the art of filmmaking, all for a fraction of the cost. And it's also going to be hella, hella scary. Uh, our plan is to begin principal photography on May 6 at Cobalt Studios in New York on a budget of one million. Of our budget, we've secured 100 grand in equity to lock in our cast, and then with a 40% tax credit for upstate New York, we're looking to fulfill the remaining 500 grand of our budget with additional debt, equity, and sales partners. Which we hope one of you will be. Thank you so much for your time. Let's talk at the bar and we can show you more. <laughs> wow, perfect, perfect, wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you believe it's already the last pitch? I'm nearly sad. I am sad, actually. Because it's fun. I like it. Yes, I love it. Okay, so let's go. <sighs> so, the last one. It's a duo again. It's a producer of London with 20 years of experience. Um, new film company in 2023, right? Rebel, yeah, I love the name again. I mean, really, the production company's name here are awesome. I don't know if it is a criteria to be selected, but <laughs> this is really good. So, specialized in socially relevant, entertaining film for the international audience. This is Sean Scott Griffin and Sid Heather, an award-winning award filmmaker. Yes, of course, BAFTA Connect member, Overthinker, he says, and uh, from Kent, and uh, he's um, really well known for this eclectic visual style, Jean Blendier's work. So it's going to be a great duo to finish this series. Yes, there you go. My check, my check. Thank you. you ready? Hold test, on. Test. Testing. Ah, let's take a deep breath. It's the last one, and the audience is concentrated. And uh, you're still there? Yeah. yeah. Good. They're still there. Okay. You're still there? Good. Go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now, if I ask you, um, what is the connection between the movies, Memento, Fight Club, um, the others, and The Sixth Sense? I mean, most of you will go, well, you know, some of them are good thrillers, they're great horror. What's the connection? What's, what is the connection? Well, now, if I say the words to you, unreliable narrator, we should get a bit of an R in the room. Ah. <laughs> All those films are led by an unreliable narrator. You see, as a script analyst, I've read thousands upon thousands of scripts, and about 0.1% are truly standout, remarkable, and unforgettable. And you know what? Unreliable narrator scripts fall into that category. Hush Little One is a supernatural um, horror thriller with a folklore connection, with an unreliable narrator and a killer twist ending. So the logline is when a pill-popping loner returns home to an isolated um, community, island community, she, to, re to reconnect with her estranged family. She 
is kind of shocked to discover that her missing brother has actually returned from the dead and is actually inhabited by an ancient demon, uh, pagan de demon. The themes of the film are essentially grief, survival, and fear, and in particular, childhood fear. And this is something that's really interested me in terms of why certain ideas that we are kind of told as a child, whether they're songs or ideas, stories, they kind of stay with us as children and maybe even kind of linger into adulthood. I don't know if there's anyone else in the room like me where I kind of have to fight that primal urge to not check over my shoulder in the dark or run up the stairs in the dark if I'm on my own. This is the kind of thing I want to tap into with Hush Little One and, um, uh, kind, of, and kind of ask the questions, um, are monsters real? And in our, in our world that we're creating, yes, they are. Um, in, so, sorry, and the... Sorry, I've lost my train for thought. Um, Yes, the most exciting thing about this film for me as a director is the power to play with misdirection and misdirection in the form of an unreliable narrator because from the very beginning of the film, we are living in the world of an unreliable narrator with a secret, a kind of secret that will kind of be revealed at the end and it will shock the audience. So our leading lady attached is Mandip Gill. Um, she's from Doctor Who and um, as a South Asian British female, she will be probably, as, as far as we know, the first... South Asian female to lead the cast of a British horror. So we are making an unprecedented casting choice there. Um, and it's 2024, you know, just let that sink in for a minute, but not too long. Um, yeah. starring, starring alongside, um, we are reaching out to, our casting directors reached out to Samantha Morton, uh, Fiona Shaw, Harriet Walter. We have an embarrassment of riches in Britain for, this lead, uh, for the casting on the second role. And um, this film's new to... This film, is, ooh, this film is new to the market. We need two million quid. It's 62 million, which is what Lago says we can get back. That's a lot of money. So if you want to know more, come and see us after the um, thing and we can have a dance and a beer <laughs> and talk about 62 million That's quid. That's gone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? Stay on stage. How many producers do we still have? Can we have a picture on everybody on stage of all of who's been pitching? Come on, come on, let's make that great. Yes, that was amazing. Come with me, come on stage. I leave the room here for you. Yes, 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 come, come, come. Yes, 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 I'm going to do the shoot myself. Hold on. We're going to do a... Yes. Can we have a little bit of light here? Let's do a... Panorama reverse mode. Are we seeing it? No, this is not going to work. Okay, so let us see if that works. No, I'm going to do a panorama. Oh, please, come on, come on. Can, can somebody do a panorama picture for us? Yes? Panorama picture, anyone? Hold on. Uh, panorama, yes. You know panorama, you may like, you know. Okay, so three, and let's be active, right? We're going to show them we rock the stage. So let's be like, yes. You ready? Three, two, one, yeah! We brought it! Okay, I think that's good. And you, are you good? Do we want to applaud the audience because they made it? Yeah! Hold on, I'm not finished yet. Thank you. I'm not completely finished yet. I just want to say it was a great pleasure, great stories. I can only engage the ones who didn't dare. They say they were investors, producers, equity, whatever. Go there because now we start the networking. So come to the project, talk to them. I mean, I was there last year. It was fantastic to see even people t talking to me, saying like, hey, you know, I like that project and I even made an introduction. So you never know. Talk to me in case you're shy and I can make the introduction. You're very shy? Yes? yes? Oh, okay. So yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We're going to do this. Okay. So I would say in case Lago doesn't want to say anything else, you're good? Yes? Net networks until six here in this room. This is wonderful. So we are between us. We can talk. Great networking. Make it happen. I want to see this, right? Okay, let's go. Thank you and bye.